right, and welcome back to another episode of Raul's World of Sense. I am Raul. This time around, we're going to continue our exploration of the Dofer A196 phase lock loop. Uh, if you joined us last time, we were looking at the VCO and the phase comparator sections of our PLL over here, phase lock loop. Uh, this time around, I thought it would be useful to kind of explore the low-pass filter section and uh, check out something a little bit different this time. Uh, so without further ado, let's just jump right in and start to see some of the basic features and behaviors of this section of the module. So to start out with, we're going to uh, set up a patch here that's going to be triggering notes to a VCO and that's going to be our A110 right over here. And uh, we're going to use this to then go into the PLL over here and then out to our VCA over here. We're going to use this as a mixer. Um, our setup is a little bit different than what we looked at last time, but uh, I think it kind of stands on its own here. So let me get my setup going a little bit. I'm going to go over here on the left of my rack and I'm going to take a sine wave out. There we go. And uh, then I'm going to patch into my offset. There we go. And then I'm going to patch out from my offset to get my notes into the CV in of my dual quantizer. I'm going to go out from my dual quantizer over into standard VCO. There we are. And then if I go back to the other side, I'm going to go out my sine wave, but instead of going over to my PLL right now, um, I actually want to make a copy of this signal, so I'm going to go over to my multiples immediately to the left of it. Make sure these are plugged in all the way. And over here at my multiples, I now have copies coming out from here, here, and here. And so I'm going to take one copy of that and go over into my PLL. There we go. Signal's going in. And then I'm going to get a different cable, a little bit longer over here. Take the second copy. There we are. And I'm going to go over to my VCA, audio in one. So we can hear the regular A110 and the behavior that it's uh, sort of doing right now. Now, um, I did have to play around a little bit with the offset, the A183 over here, and the frequency of my A147. Um, I didn't just happen into this sort of... Uh, nice little comfortable frequency that's going up the scale and down the scale but rather than take up your time uh, doing that I wanted to just go ahead and set that up and then just patch everything all the way across so now that we have our basic notes let's hear what our PLL signal actually sounds like and we're going to continue to use the output from the phase comparator section over here so I'm going to patch this out and then I'm going to go over into audio input 2 over here, and we're going to add that in. So there are the two signals together, and you can hear quite a distinct difference there and the type of timbre and character that the phase lock loop is actually adding to the pitch signal. Okay. So let's just do a little review of the patch just so we know what's going on here. Uh, the A147 over here is outputting a CV signal. That's a sine wave. That sine wave is going into the A183 offset. Um, and I don't, I didn't really want to go into the explanation of this, but let's just understand that I'm using this to sort of get a smooth, uh, up and down of the scale. 
That's what we hear. You know, it's kind of gliding up the scale and then down the scale. Uh, the quantizer, immediately to the right of it, is actually correcting it so that it's only in the major key. As you can see here with the switch, it's right in the center, so it's playing major notes. And it's actually in the chord setting, so I'm only getting chord notes that are being output here at the CV out. Um, I do have it in the plus seven setting, in case you're curious. But then that CV signal, those notes at this point, are going over into the A110, and that is what is creating pitches. From that point on, my A110 is being split, as you can see by the multiples here. Uh, one is going to be the dry signal via the gray cable, which is going over into our VCA, which if I turn down the PLL, that was that signal that we were listening to. And then the second one is actually going from here over to the signal input of our phase lock loop. And this module is then attempting to lock onto the phase of that signal and then outputting that result over here into audio input two, which is what we hear right there. Okay. So that is a basic uh, sort of triggering of the internal VCO of the phase lock loop and out via the phase comparator. Now let's bring the low pass filter into this. Let's observe a little bit of the behavior of our low pass filter. Right now we have it at a relatively high setting, so let's bring that down a little bit. So we got quite a different uh, behavior from a very small change on the frequency setting of our low pass filter here at the phase lock loop. And if I bring it down even further, we should get a slightly different behavior. And it's almost inaudible except for at certain frequencies. Okay, now let's bring it up quite a bit. Actually over here, let's go all the way to the top over here. See what kind of results we get here. You get these kind of nice little ghost tones that you hear in sort of frequency, uh, or not frequency, but uh, in ring modulation. And I guess, yeah, some standard frequency modulation signals, those kind of little ghost tones happening right after it, overtones. Now, at this point, I can go in and I can adjust the range of my VCO. I'm not exactly sure what this is going to do, but let's flip it over. So I get a little bit more of a droney type sound from this particular setting. I'm in comparator three and then mid-range of my PLL VS VCO. So that's one way I can sort of vary it, is just change the range of the VCO. I kind of preferred it in the high setting, so let's flip back into that. But this time, let's change the phase comparator type, so we'll go to two.
So this sounds like a far cry from what we were actually listening to a moment ago. So let's stick with this for a moment. And then try adjusting the frequency of the low pass again. So we're at a fairly high setting here. So let's go maybe to a little bit lower of a setting. Okay, we're getting some fairly interesting results. Let's bring it down even further. Now, in my observations, and possibly in some of the uh, little uh, trials that we've done here, just in these last few moments, uh, you might be observing the same behavior that I have been observing, and that is that it tends to be a little more stable over in the lower frequencies. It's still sort of a little bit chaotic, but it's almost as if it gets a little more chaotic when you start going into this direction. And again, just an observation. It might just happen to be that this behavior is occurring because of the sound source that I've chosen, you know, si sine wave over here. Uh, definitely not a hard and fast rule. But why is this happening? Um, closest I could find to an answer to this is within the A196 manual, there's a little phrase that kind of shed a little bit of light on this, and it says in the manual to obtain, uh, I'm going to paraphrase a little bit, to op obtain a smooth control voltage for the VCO, the frequency of the low pass filter has to be smaller than the lowest frequency of the internal or the external audio signal. Or what will happen is the internal VCO will jitter or sort of wobble around the correct frequency. Now, I think we heard a little bit more of the wobble when we were over here. Where it's almost like it catches the frequency, but it's sort of like teetering. So if that, if that kind of helps a little bit, understand it, um, I found this kind of very sort of focused on what exactly is happening here. Uh, I'm not trying to understand entirely mathematically what's going on in this module, but this kind of helps me sort of visualize a little bit as to what's going on when I listen to this. Um, and so I'm going to paraphrase it again just so we can kind of let that sink in. Uh, so to obtain a smooth CV for the VCO, the frequency of the low pass should be smaller than the frequency of the internal or external audio signal that you're feeding into it. Or what you'll hear is the jitter around the cor correct frequency. Now, uh, in my experiments and in my sort of techniques, I don't think that I would be able to just predict what frequency I'm going to send into this. I think the only way that I would get an effective uh, sort of timbre would be just to go in, patch my signal, and then adjust settings over here until I get something I like. So it's not necessarily to think of it, you know, in terms of numbers over here. And okay, I must have it in the low range, and then I have to have this in the low range, and then I have to adjust into phase comparator two. Uh, I don't think that that technique would be the most effective. But uh, I think definitely using, using your ears more in a situation like this would be great. So we've done Phase Comparator 3 and Phase Comparator 2. Let's jump over to Phase Comparator 1. Just so we can hear a little bit of that behavior. And right now we're in a little bit of a mid setting right here.
Okay, so let's bring our frequency up. And for me anyway, the jitter or the wobble is actually the interesting part of this module here. And that's actually kind of what it says in the module that the, or in the uh, manual, I'm sorry, uh, that that water, that wobble or that jitter uh, can actually be used for special effects. Which I definitely sort of like the way it sounds, so. So that's in the high frequency. Gonna let it go through one more time. Okay, now let's bring it all the way down. Or And so there we can kind of hear that sort of repetition of sort of more stable, or what I'm calling stable, over in this section, where there's not so much kind of uh, added overtones and sort of a harsh sounding effect as we had over here. And I don't know if I would necessarily describe it as more legato in sound on this side, but I would go with legato, maybe uh, sort of a long, sort of more sustained wobble type of effect. But definitely interesting nonetheless. Okay. So we've done a few passes in the high frequency. Uh, before we wrap up this part one of the low pass filter demo of the phase lock loop, let's just jump into the low frequency so we can hear some of those effects. There we have a little bit more of a droney type effect. Let's bring our frequency down a little bit. And with that, let's try Phase Comparator 2. Not getting a lot of activity there. Low frequency setting, let's try and bring it more towards the center. Still not really that many results. Let's go a little higher, see if we get anything. Not really so much. Okay, let's flip over to 3. It's fairly interesting. And we have a high frequency setting over here. Let's go a little lower. Okay, so now we've done a few demonstrations of manual adjustments. I'm going to go ahead and unpatch this for a moment. Uh, we've done a few manual adjustments of our low pass filter and did a little bit of observing of the behavior of some of the different types of phase comparator within our A196. Uh, so that's actually going to wrap up this part one of this segment. Um, in the next segment, part two, of the low pass filter demo of the A196. We're going to be still triggering a little bit of notes going on here, uh, but we're also going to be checking out the CV input, which is going to be coming into play here as well, and just see how it kind of uh, contrasts with the behavior that we had adjusting manually. So please stay tuned for that, and thanks for watching.